Hello, this is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and this is part one of our look into Particle Illusion, the easy to use, powerful high-end particle and motion graphics generator that we're gonna to use to create a variety of different effects with. In this first part, we're gonna dive straight into the interface and see how we can generate up our first set of particles, which I've used to create this motion background. In this first section, we're gonna have a look at Particle Illusion's interface and see how we can quickly find and take a preset and then change it for what we need it to do. So we're gonna be creating a motion background in this case. So I've got my new composition. I'm just gonna create a new solid layer here and I'm gonna call this one Particle Illusion Motion Background. And Particle Illusion is part of Continuum 2019 and we'll find it in the particles category. Now, Particle Illusion is a preset-driven particle effect. And if you're familiar with Continuum plugins, you know that we find our presets in the FX browser. So we have a look here, and you'll see we have a number of particles available to us in the presets. But Particle Illusion is a little bit different. And I'll just cancel out of here, and I'm gonna come up to my effect and launch Particle Illusion. And this brings us into the Particle Illusion interface, which is the heart of this effect. And if I come down to my emitter libraries here, you'll see that we have lots of different emitters available to us, a lot more than we had in the FX browser. And in fact, there are thousands of different presets available to us, including fire stuff, water stuff, motion graphics elements, and many, many more. And if you can only see the sampler library, you just have to come up to the help menu and download the emitters. And this will bring us to the right page to grab them here. And because there are so many different types of emitters, we also have a search box here. So if I'm looking for something like fire, I can just type fire in here. And I'll see lots of different emitters that have something to do with fire. Uh, if I type in water here instead, we're gonna get some more watery emitters as well. Now the search box is a little bit rudimentary, but it does help to filter out some of the stuff we don't need. And what you'll also see is as soon as we click on any of these emitters down here, it starts to show up in the preview window up at the top, and I can drag my cursor along, and you can see how that emitter is gonna work when we move the emitter point around. Now for this first one, I'm gonna choose paint, and I'm gonna have a look at the paint wars one. Uh, and this is, this is quite an interesting little effect. It's like someone's throwing a whole load of paint right at us. I like this one, we're gonna start with this one. So to apply an emitter, we can do one of two things. I can either just double click on it and it applies it over in my stage area over here and play that back and we can see what that's doing. And if I just undo that, the other way of applying an emitter is just by clicking on the stage there and it will apply that emitter wherever we place it. And I can then move that around wherever I want to. And we can change the size of the windows as we go. And if at any point we get a little bit lost, we can always come up to view and change our layout. So we can go default edit or create. In this case, I'm gonna go for edit because I've already got my article in there. So let's play that back and it's playing back in real time for us. And if we look at the top right hand corner of the viewer, we can see the current frame we're on, the duration, and also the number of particles that are alive at this moment. So now I've got my preset here, I wanna start making a few changes to it. I want to make this bigger. So I'll come over to the properties on the left hand side here. And what I can do is I can change up the size that makes it bigger there and you see that updating in real time or i can also change the zoom as well which will also have the same sort of effect with this particular preset if i wanted the particles to be alive for longer i can change up the life on these particles here and with this particular preset this also has the effect of slowing it down as well now this is already looking quite nice i, I sort of like this as a good starting point for where we need to go and if I just stop that there for a second. What I don't like though is the black at the start of this effect. There's about 70 frames before the viewer is actually filled up with the paint. And after that, it stays pretty much filled up throughout the rest of the composition. But it's that first little bit here that just sort of irks my eye a little bit. So if I come back over here, we'll take a look at the hierarchy we have. We have our layer and we can make multiple layers if we want to using the little hamburger menu over here. And contained within our layer, we can have multiple emitters. The only emitter we have at the moment is this Paint Wars. So I'm going to open up my emitter here 
and take a look at this frames to preload. Now what this does is it pre-runs the simulation a few frames or the number of frames I tell it to before we hit the start here. So by changing this to 75 frames to preload, we actually start off our layer with everything fully populated up. I can also change my particle order so I can have the oldest particles in the back or the oldest particles in the front. And this will give a very different look depending on what we choose. And in this case, we'll have a very dynamic looking one with the oldest in the back. And we have something that looks a little bit calmer with the oldest in the front. So the old particles have to die before we can see the newer particles arrive. Now I'm quite happy with how this is looking right now. I am just going to come back to view and just load us back into the default. Because as you start working with particle illusion and some of these presets, you'll find that some of them have brackets MB at the end of them. And that MB stands for motion blur which means that these particular presets work better when you have motion blur turned on. How do we turn motion blur on? Well, all we have to do is come up to the stage, go motion blur, and now we have motion blur turned on. Lovely. So I'm gonna hit apply on this, and we'll come back into After Effects, and I can just play that through. And you'll notice I just hit spacebar, and it's playing through almost at real time. And the performance of these particles depend on a couple of things. Well, one, it depends on your system. If you have a stronger system with a chunkier graphics card, that's obviously going to be able to throw a lot more pixels around. And obviously, the number of particles that are alive at any given time. So more complex emitters are going to, to sort of bulk the system down a little bit more than simpler ones. The other thing that is going to slow things down is also motion blur. Because motion blur means that your system is going to have to calculate more particles to simulate that motion blur up. But as a first effect, I think that's looking pretty good. We found a preset we liked, we tweaked it up a little bit, added motion blur and brought it back into After Effects. And now you've got the basics of that under your belt, I think we can do something slightly more. In the next part of this tutorial, we're gonna dive deeper into particle illusion and we're gonna start looking at different emitters and the hierarchy between emitters and particles. I'm also gonna see how we can control those back in the After Effects interface. So please join me in part two of our introduction to Particle Illusion. Thanks for watching part one, and be sure to go to boriseffects.com to download a free trial of Continuum Complete, which does include Particle Illusion. Also subscribe to the Boris YouTube channel by clicking on the link here, and stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on all the Boris Effects products.